Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to automate uh, VXN BGP VPN on Nexus 9K using Yang with RISTConf as a transport. Uh, I'm going to focus on the most dynamic part of VXLAN, which is creation of VXLAN tunnels. So I have two leaves here, leaf 1, uh, VTAP 1, VTAP 2, and this is my spine. We're going to look at um, the, essentially the static configuration. Th that one we're not really going to automate, because typically you do it only once, as you provision your VXLAN fabric initially. So we have the necessary features uh, for VXLAN. We have an uplink to the spine, running OSPF, running PIM. We have fairly standard OSPF config. Um, of course, we have BGP as well with the right L2 VPN, EVPN address families. The video is assuming you, you, you are familiar with VXN, BGP, VPN. Um, so we have this, we have a VTAP interface, right? Um, and we have no VLANs, except just a few, but we have no VLANs that are enabled for VXLAN, and we have no VXLAN segments currently configured. And the same is here for the second VTAP. NVA1 has no VNIs configured on it, and um, there's no VXLAN VNIs configured. We have BGP as well. Just configure to peer with the spine and just uh, as a quick review the spine here has fairly standard OSPF and BGP configs and so what we're going to do here is we want to take the two VTAPs we want to take port 41 on both sides and essentially build the L2 VNI segments between those two interfaces so we're going to use Postman since this is REST right called restconf um, and so this is how we're going to do it um, so first of all we need to create a VLAN and L2 VNI so we're going to do a post um, the management IP here in the address is just an environment variable that exists in Postman that way I can easily configure both VTAPs you need to go to the restconf um, sub mode data and then the top system is the, is the top level and then you have a hierarchy of objects just like you have with NXAPI REST and so the first one is the BD items which represents all the BDs in the system so we're going to go there and essentially here we are creating a new BD list which rep it represents a new VLAN really as simple as that and so it has two um, items fabric and cap represents the VLAN and this one represents the VXLAN. <clears throat> and so if you're wondering how to know what the object looks like, first you can look at the documentation but also you can use the sandbox. Okay, so the sandbox now has an option for Annex Yang and so if I want to type VLAN 42 and see what it looks like, I can convert and see pretty much exactly what objects I need to use. So we're gonna go ahead and go there and send the first one which is successful and so now if we go here we see oops, this is the spine <clears throat> we see the VLAN has been created and the VN segment has been created and associated with the VLAN okay so this is step number one what you need to do next is add the L2 VNI to the NV interface so you make it part of the VTAP and here we go to the top system and um, here this is where we have the, the list of VNI items right and so here ID is one it's NV1 typically there is only one and we have the, the list of VNI that are being defined so this is the NW list with a VNI ID we create so we're gonna do tenant um, um, 20,000 so we're gonna do VNI 20,200 to, to make sense with the VLAN we use multicast and we specify which multicast group is being used for this L2 VNI. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, we're sending it, and now we can see, confirm with the CLI, with the NV1, L2 VNI is here, the multicast group is here as well. So this is good. Um, now we need to add this L2 VNI to EVPN. 
So here you noticed we have this EVPN items object and under the BDEVI items. And so we're going to create a new item under here, under EVPN, and we're going to say, okay, this L2VNI here with this name is part of EVPN. And this is to essentially configure the route distinguisher and the route targets, right, for both import and export, right? We, we make it auto, auto. So we are sending this, and now under the BGP EVPN config, we see the L2VNI is part of it, and the RD and raw target have been configured. And uh, the last thing we need to do is to go under the access port and enable the VLAN um, under this access port to make it part of the VLAN and L2VNI. So again, we go to RESTConf, we go to the top system, we have this interface items which represent the list of interfaces. And under this we have a list of physical items. So here we are creating a new list with, I mean we are not creating, we are accessing the list with ID 141. And we specify that the access VLAN uh, attributes of this one is VLAN 200. Okay, and so we go ahead and we send it. And we see now under 141, it's now switch port access VLAN 200. Okay, so VType 1 is configured properly for the L2 VNI segments. What we are going to do is do exactly the same but for the second VTape. So in Postman, you can run a whole collection in one shot. So this is what we'll do. So the create VNI, we're going to specify the second VTape, do start, and this is creating everything. And so quickly we can make sure in here this is everything has been uh, configured. So now we can actually validate again using Yang and RESTConf that the config has taken place. So we can read status, of course using a GET HTTP operation. So just like we use to create the VLAN we created a new BD item under system BD items. We can read and get VLANs, so we just read everything that is under BD items. So let's go ahead and send it. And what we see here is that our VLAN 200 exists, right, as expected, just like we, we've created it with the right VLAN end cap. We can also verify the NV interface, this is under that special object type. EPID items, and so here, uh, as we expected, again, NV1, okay, and has the L2VNI 2200 associated to it with the multicast group we have specified. And if we wanted to specifically get this L2VNI, we would again go under the EVPN items, the BD items, and here in REST you can specify a special um, uh, attributes you want to access. So here we're going to access the list specifically with this segment ID. Okay, and so here we can get verify the properties of the L2 VNI we have created. Now let's uh, send some traffic and validate. Um, we have an XR traffic generator with two parts in the same subnet. So we're going to send some traffic between the two. Um, this is the flows we're going to use. And so, source MAC1, destination MAC5, right? And this is the two IP addresses. And the other one is, is, is the reverse. So let's go ahead and start traffic. Typically, it takes a few seconds. Okay, and we can see it is working. Uh, the two ports are transmitting and receiving frames at 10,000 packets per second as we we've specified. And so we can go here and we can make sure the NV peers have been detected on both sides. Of course, right, this is the loopback IP that is being used. And in the show MAC address table, uh, we can see this is the local MAC address under 141. 
and this is the remote MAC address. The C flag indicates it's been learned by the control plane of PGP VPN, and uh, the destination is the remote VTAP. We can look at the VNI counters to confirm as well. Uh, as well. So um, that should be a show. Sorry, uh, no show NV VNI twenty two hundred counters. We see packets are flowing. And now, of course, we want to be able to remove this configuration. So it needs to be very dynamic, very easy to do. So here we're going to easily delete the L2VNI 2200. So what we need to do first is to revert the access port back to the native VLAN. So here we just do a post, we go to the interface items. We specifically say interface 41, we put it back to VLAN 1. This is, this is how to do it. So here we can confirm. 141 doesn't have the VLAN 200 anymore and also we are going to remove the L2 VNI from EVPN so just like earlier we go to the EVPN items and we send a HTTP delete right this is the big advantage of using REST conf you can use the REST operations and specify spef specify uh, that this is this is the L2 VNI right so we do that as we go back to BGP, we see the EVPN, the segment is deleted from EVPN. We are also going to remove the L2VNI from NV interface. So we go to the same list, right? This represents NV1. So we say specifically EP is equal 1. And we go to the VNI items and we pick the 2200 L2VNI and we send a delete. Okay, so just to confirm, right? Before sending it, it's still here. We are sending the delete, and now this is gone. And so the last step we need to do is to remove the VLAN, right? And so as we remove the VLAN, this will also remove the VNI associated. So again, we send a delete operation under the BD items, and BD list is the VLAN 200. OK. Now the VLAN is removed.